We spend all this time doing research. We accumulate massive amounts of information. And then, we have no idea where the hell anything is. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today, because it don't matter if you wait, do all this research if you can't find it. I believe organization is the most important part of success in high levels of academic debate. There's no question to me, I've never seen a disorganized team do well, ever. I've never seen them win out rounds successfully. Maybe they'll get one lucky round. But in general, it's a barrier. It's the biggest barrier. It's the reason why uh, many people who are very smart and are able to make great arguments lose because they don't know where stuff is and they didn't have answers to that argument. And I, this, is, this is my pet peeve as a coach. You want to really make me mad, lose, that at, lose the assignment I spent all, all night researching um, and you can't find it in your tubs. That'll make me just be like, all right, I'm gonna, you, you can go debate yourself. I'm not even going to help you. Like, why would I put all that work into it if you can't even keep track of what we give you? Okay? So, number one, you can't read evidence you can't find. What good is it if you can't find it? So you've got to be able to find it. Okay? <coughs> and even if you can find it, if you're wasting prep time, there should be no time that you should be like, oh, where's this? Oh, God. Oh, God. You, you sh it's time that's precious. In a debate, prep time is something you should be using to strategize, to evaluate to compare and contrast implications in the debate, you shouldn't be wasting your time going, I know it's in here somewhere. That's ridiculous. Uh, additionally, you uh, gain a whole bunch of credibility by appearing that you are on top of it. You know, seeing someone frantically search for evidence sends one big signal to the judge. This person is clueless. They have no idea what they're doing. They're like, they, they've lost it. It doesn't give you any credibility to the judge. You've already lost any time. You know, if you look disorganized and frantic, perceptually, you've already lost the debate. Next, you get speaker awards. I got lots of speaker awards because I was very organized. I did stand-up two ACs, repeatedly, because I pulled everything I needed while they were speaking, because I didn't have to look. I knew exactly where it was. And just standing up and speaking that quickly gave me extra, an extra speaker point every single affirmative round. That matters. You want, I mean, I don't know if speaker awards matters to you, but even if you don't get a speaker award, you want to get higher speaker points so that when you clear, you're not at the bottom of the bracket getting rolled by the 8 team. Okay? It's very important that you have, it, perceptually, organization is incredibly important. Um, additionally, it's easier to follow you during the speech if you're an organized person. Um, with, even during your speech, you have to be able to provide a structure for the judge to follow. And disorganized people are like, oh, oh, back, oh, back over here. Oh, wait a minute, on that one. That, as a judge, you're sitting there and you're like, this is so frustrating. I want it to flow. I want to just start my pen at the top of the page and just keep going down. I don't want to be like trying to find where you are. So you've got to be organized as you lead a, a judge through your speech. Okay? Now here's some of the bigger issues. Um, partner relationships is a reality of policy debate. Uh, it's probably one of the biggest struggles I have as a coach is to get my debaters to get along and to work together. And one of the most common areas of disagreement is about who's to blame for the, the, the incredible disarray of the evidence. Everyone's going, no, you, you, you filed that. What, where did you file this? No, you, no. If you want partner relations to be strong, you need to be organized. It's very easy to start pointing fingers when you lose evidence. Don't lose evidence. You know, don't be like, I thought you filed that. Both partners need to know where everything is. You know, you, if, and if you don't, you better start working harder. You can't have a partner who's like, uh, I only know the affirmative files. What, then you're useless in, in half your debates. You need to know where everything is. You need to know where everything is. You, 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 you've got to be able to uh, have a filing system that both you and your partner understand. Um, that's critical. Next. You know, coaches. You want to make a coach upset? Lose a file. I mean, it's, it's so frustrating when you work all week to get ready for a tournament and you strategize and you've done the research and you put together a first line and you get to the debate and it's an important debate, it's a break round and the team, your team can't find a file. You know, you've already done all of the work, but you can't find it. What good is the work? 
You really don't, what's going to happen, I guarantee you, if any of you feel that you get alienated by coaches, keep losing evidence and that alienation will just increase. I mean, I'm not, I, I'll tell you straightforward, if I have a team who's just losing evidence, I will not waste my time coaching them. I can't coach someone who can't find evidence. I mean, I don't want to spend a half an hour being like, Look, give me your file. You know, I don't want to have to do that. You should be able to find things on your own. It's very, very important. If you want a coach to work with you, you've got to at least show them that you are prepping out what you can. You know, even if you don't understand all the arguments, if you can find them, then a coach can help you understand them. But a coach can't find it for you. I know some coaches who actually organize their, their debaters' files. I, I don't think that's chill. I mean, you can't do it in the round for them. I mean, you're just creating a dependency. You all need to know your own files, and my philosophy as a coach is I should never have to file anything of yours. I'll tell you how you should do it, but it's your file and you should know it. I'm not going to do it for you. I'll do something else, like go find information and help you strategize arguments. Okay? The next thing is team relations. Um, big problem on my team is people lose stuff and then they're like going around begging and borrowing. Okay? Um, people don't like to loan their briefs, and I recommend that you don't. That's my recommendation. Someone comes to you and says, um, I can't believe it, I lost my file. You'd be like, oh well. And it's not, and, and it, you know, you might think that's a little cold, but you know what, in my experience, more often than not, if you borrow someone else's file, you don't return it in the same condition, and then it creates friction on the team. I mean, you, it is your responsibility, you all get the same evidence, you all should get the same evidence, so you should be able to um, keep track of it. It's not the other part team's responsibility to provide you with a brief every time you lose it. It's also a waste of time and it's distracting before rounds to have someone run in and be like, I can't find this file, I can't find this file. Well, I'm telling you, this year on my team, don't ask anyone. If you can't, you know, during the tournament, don't ask anyone. At the end of the day, if you can't find a file, you can go and copy it. But during the tournament, before round, I don't want you harassing other teams for their evidence. If you don't got it, you don't get to use it. And that, the reason I'm doing that is because I tried to be nice about it and be like, oh, I guess sometimes you lose things. I never lost anything when I debated, ever. You know, and if I allow people to have an out when they lose evidence, then they're not going to understand the full magnitude of losing evidence. There's no excuse for losing evidence. You know, oh, I left it in the room and maybe the other team took it. No, 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 no. You, you need to make sure that at the end of every debate, everything you took out goes back in. And, you know, everyone, there's no uh, justification for losing evidence. It's just not acceptable. And that's, a, that's something that I see as a big problem with a lot of younger debaters, is that they don't respect their evidence. You need to treat it like it's a precious jewel. Serious. Okay? The next thing, for those of you who have a temper with yourself, I mean, Losing evidence can really frustrate you, can make you angry. You'd be like, I got the best card and I can't find it and I wish I could have it and ugh. Don't, I mean, it seems like a, an ounce of prevention here is worth a pound of cure. Just, just get it down, organize it, okay? And the ultimate reality is you will win more debates by being organized because you will be able to maximize the efficiency of your work. That means every amount of work you put into it, you can get, you are able to reap the benefits. Uh, all the research you do, you reap the benefits. If you are disorganized in all the work you do, you will not be able to reap the full benefits. And, um, you know, as I said, I've never seen a disorganized debater do well. If you look at out rounds, people are very organized. So let's go now to how do you stay organized. Uh, you know, first thing is you have to manage your time wisely. Um, it's probably, I mean, in general, if you're going to be successful in debate and you're going to go to class and do well in class, I know for some of you that's, not necessarily the case, but if you want to do well, I mean, I, I, I coach at Cornell, and the reality is, you know, you don't go to the Ivy League school to debate. You go to get a degree, and so you have to prioritize your academics. You have to be able to get that done, um, otherwise, you know, it's a waste of a whole bunch of money. And I would say, it, you don't have to be an Ivy League school. If you're going to pay to get an education, you might as well get some reasonably good grades and do fairly well in school. You know, but we also want to have a personal life. So you have to balance and sort of juggle these different things, and you have to manage your time wisely. You need to learn to do this now. In fact, I believe that's one of the biggest indirect benefits of debate is you're forced 
to manage your time, whereas many of your peers waste their time watching useless television programs and, you know, partying with the same people and getting drunk all the time. I mean, I'm sure some of you are like, <laughs> I do that too. But, you know, the reality is that time is very precious. You only have so much. I mean, it's, the more you get old, the more you realize this, is that time keeps going and the amount of time you have gets narrower and narrower, it seems. So find a way to organize your time. Don't have wasted, useless time. Try to find, you know, even if you have a big block of time, decide to do something personal that you really enjoy doing. That's fine, but don't just sit there, like, wait, I, I don't know. I just am at a point in my life where I see people just sitting there sort of zoning out and sort of being completely uh, useless, and it's just like, wow, that's just people who are not fully appreciating how valuable time is. I mean, if you ever have kids, let me just tell you right now that your time will be sucked away like you can't even contemplate. And it's a great way to spend your life, but it's another pressure on time. So use time wisely. Number two is a little sort of uh, perspective I have is you can't work in, in complete, you know, you can't be organized if you're in a situation of complete mayhem and chaos. Um, a lot of people, including myself, only work well in the right situation. Uh, if you have, you know, for example, if where you're trying to get your work done is where, you know, there's a whole bunch of people having a raging party, um, or there's a whole bunch of noise, or it's just completely messy and smelly, then you're probably not going to be the most effective worker, the most organized. You need to have a somewhat of a peace full and tranquil environment to be able to focus your mind to be organized. Number three is you've got to have the supplies. Um, to be organized, you need to have scissors tape and expandos. Um, obviously, pens help, but I'm assuming that you should be able to find those. Uh, you need to have scissors to chop up everything. Never, ever take any brief from this institute and then use it in the year without recutting it. Um, you need to basically make your own briefs. Take everything that we have here and use it as sort of like a raw material and then turn it into a finished product on your own. But it's essential that you understand that you have to have these supplies. You know, I, rec I think the most important thing for organization is a whole bunch of expandos. I, 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 that's like the first, if you want to invest in something for debate, buy a whole bunch of expandos. Um, the, my, I find, and I've pretty much am seeing that everyone who's successful is using lots of expandos. I don't see um, people using file folders anymore because it's you can't put an entire file in one expand in one file folder, but you can put an entire file, an entire argument in one expander. Um, Next is you need to create an organizational system that you can explain to others. You know, I've seen these people have these organizational systems, and you're like. Um, what is this? And they're like, well, I understand it. I mean, if, if you need it, if you need a, like, a, you know, a encryption device to decode what your organizational system is, it seems to me that it's not the best. I think you want to have one that you can easily explain to your partner, that you could easily uh, explain to your coach in case your coach came in to help you. You want to, you want to have one that makes sense, not just to you, but something that makes sense to other people. And oftentimes, this is the reality. If it only makes sense to you, you're lying to yourself. Because it probably doesn't make sense to you, and you're just saying that because you can't explain it to anyone else. <laughs> so, you know, you, you've got it. That's just sort of like a standard. If you can explain it to someone else, you're probably going in the right direction. Okay? The next one is file your own evidence. Never, ever, 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 ever use somebody else's index as, oh, I filed it. I took it, those index on top, I put it in a folder. It's filed. <laughs> that kills me. I mean, you can't rely on other people to create your organizational system. You need to go through and use that index as like, okay, that's what they think it says. Now I'm going to go through and find out what I think it says. Because you're debating with this file, not somebody else. You need to know you've got to have your own personal index. What I would do is I would go through, and this sort of has, if you look at number six, I turned a lot of what, I, what other people thought were arguments into briefing paper. Because I decided I wasn't going to use that argument. I didn't see the usefulness. And I, you know, this is one of the ways you can be organized is if you ain't going to read it, turn it into a briefing paper. Why put it in your folder as miscellaneous or stuff or random 
or you know, like <laughs> when I see people's files like that, I just want to be like, why don't you just call this briefing paper? I mean, you're not going to be able to find that in a debate. You know, oh, look at miscellaneous number 10. That will be the answer. You know, <laughs> and even things like extensions. What is an extension? Okay, don't have any of those. Um, don't use any of that. I'm going to talk more about that later. But you really need to uh, you need to call out the bad stuff. Okay, as much as we're going to try to produce only good evidence at this institute, um, good good is a subjective term. There's some stuff that some people will think is good, and they'll use it, and then other people look at it and go, <laughs> "What a piece of crap! I'm never going to use this." You've got to go through and decide what you are going to use. Um, obviously, you shouldn't call out stuff from the institute until you get home and have time to digest it a little bit. But as the year goes along, you should um, always be eliminating your parts of your files. Like these people who bring like eight tubs of evidence, I think they're a bunch of jokers. Like you don't need eight boxes of evidence to be competitive. I mean, I, I, I think these people, I just, they don't have enough faith in their ability to think or something because they only use about two or three of their boxes. They just bring them because they're like, oh, I've got all my back files. It's like, yeah, a bunch of irrelevant back files, it's not going to do anything for you. I mean, honestly, in my opinion, you need three, you need three tubs. I can't see you needing much more. Maybe four, if you have one tub that's like, because expandos take up a little bit of room. But, you know, the reality is you don't read that much evidence in each and every debate because of time constraints. You don't need to bring a ridiculous amount of useless crap. I mean, I don't even recommend people bring back files. I think back files is bad debate. You know, it may it, take. You can use your back file to like make a new file, but don't just keep a back file in the same condition and just rehash it over and over again. Everything is changing. You should always have something, uh, you know, relatively new to say. Uh, along with that is you should underline cards as quickly as you can. This is part of being organized. You can't know what a card says if you haven't read through it, and if you're going to read through it, you should underline it. You should never read a piece of evidence for the first time in a debate. You know, that's, that's going to get you in trouble. You need to make sure that before you read it, it's underlined, and that you know exactly what it says and all of its assumptions. Okay? Next is, I believe it's very important to use separate expandos for major arguments. Um, I've seen people buy expandos and then put, like, you know, every single argument in the same expando. Well, that's useless, because all you're going to do is you're going to open up each slot, and there's going to be like 100 pages, and you're going to take it out, and then you're going to have to flip through those 100 pages. It may cost you a significantly greater amount of money um, to have a whole bunch of expandos, but it's the only thing that you know, most of you are going to have to invest in that really is essential for your success. Buy a whole bunch of expandos. You know, have your team buy them bulk off the internet and get the cheapest price and order like as many as you possibly can afford. You can never have too many expandos. It's critical. Um, one of the things that, you know, if, if you're not going to put too much in each slot of an expando, then you're going to have to make sure you have a lot. And um, the way I've always done it and the way I think you should do it is you should file everything as answers to and then quotation marks arguments they're going to make. That's, I don't think you should have any other filing system. It's like everything should have, you know, every single file you have, you should be like, this is an answer to something. So that when you're look, when they're making arguments, you can just look down and be like, aha, they made that argument. Here's my answers to that argument. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't have any other name. You shouldn't have like um, just generic titles that you put stuff in. That's that's not user friendly. The most user friendly is when you have answers to, and let me give you some examples. Um, if you, you should have about, I think, five affirmative expandos. Five. Okay, you should have answers to critiques. On this topic, if you don't have any separate expando, answer critiques, you're going to be in a world of hurt. You need to have one expando just on that. And if you don't fill it in the first tournament, you will fill it by the end of the year, and you don't want to keep on having to shuffle around all your files. So have one expander, which is answers to critique when you're affirmative, okay? And then each of the each of the individual slots is different critiques or different strategies that, that you could use. Like maybe you'll have your, you know, this is when they read their eight minutes of critique. This is when they only read a shell that's four minutes of the critique. This is when they read a, a language critique. This is when they read a racism critique. What colonialism critique? Whatever. You need to have an entire expander to that, okay? You need on this topic. You need to have an entire expander to answer T. 
I mean, there is, it's going to, you need to, remember, you need to interpret every single word in that resolution. Um, you can probably add in this answers to theory and procedural arguments as well. But you need one expandable, which is just nasty theory debate. You know, procedural goo. Here it is. This is your answers to all these ridiculous arguments that, you know, people come up with late at night when they're really tired. And they can't think of a real argument. Okay. Um, answers to counterplans. There will be a whole bunch of picks which, for those of you who don't know, is a plan-inclusive counterplan. Um, remember, uh, there is an interpretation of the topic which says throughout means everywhere, and there will be many people who are like, do your plan everywhere, but don't do it to this tribe, don't do it to this state, and then claim net benefits of that. So you're going to have a whole bunch of counterplans. You're also going to have uh, a whole bunch of counterplans that deal with agency, like should, the, you, should it be the Congress, the Executive, or the Supreme Court? You're going to have counterplans um, that are going to have other actions taken, such as give complete sovereignty to Native people, give back the land. You're going to have a whole bunch of counterplans to check um, the affirmative ground, and so you're going to need one expando just to answer those. And then you're probably going to need at least one expando um, to answer case debate, Prob more likely two, where all you do is you just have, you know, th if they engage us on case, here's where it is. And here's why I would organize it this way, is because usually they're like, this is what I'm doing if I'm the 2AC. You know, I'm listening, and they're like, T, okay, I got my T expander right here. They start talking, they say what the violation is, I pull it out, I put it over, done. I don't need to prep that anymore, I've already got it. Okay, they go to the critique. Okay, here's my critique expando. Pull out what I need. Boom, done. Let's go. I mean, you don't want to be like, you know, searching around and you might as well have this little magic black ball and rub it. You know, please give me the answers. You know, it's, you really want to be organized enough so that as they're saying the argument, you are able to, with almost without looking, pull it out. That's how organized you have to be to be at the top of your game. Um, negative expandos. Every critique, that you are going to run on a regular basis should have its own expander. If you have some smaller critiques, you should have a smaller critique expander where there's like critical arguments there that are not as not as in depth, not as much research is done, not something you use as often. If it's a, if it's a strategy you expect to win, then you should have an expander. That should be the rule of thumb. You know, if, if you want to win on a criticism, then you're going to have to get deep enough so that you've answered every single one of the 2AC arguments on your expander. Now, what I would always do is I would take a piece of paper, um, usually, you know, one of those pieces of paper of someone else's quote-unquote research that I decided was briefing paper, and I would, you know, basically write an index on the front of the expando that has everything, and every single category is answers to, and sometimes I would put, you know, answers to um, several different arguments in the same slot if there were smaller arguments, but typically each slot should get its own first line. And that's what answers to is, for those of you who don't know. It's just a first line where you've already thought of their argument, because you prepped it out beforehand and you re researched it and you analyzed it, and you've already answered it. So you don't have to invest any mental power to figure that out. That way you have time to figure out what they throw at you that you weren't expecting. Okay? But you should have a, an expando for all the major disads you run, all the major counterplans you run. Um, then you should have expandos which are disads you don't run as often, disad or counterplans you don't use as often, but you might use. And then, on this topic, you need six expandos, one for each topic area, at least. Start out with, just come up, you know, and you might be able to combine like taxing and um, gaming and that's probably it. I, would, I wouldn't combine employment with that, even though I did it in my lecture. Taxing and gaming, they really overlap significantly, but employment is, the, is a, mu much more multifaceted than just gaming. So maybe you need five expandos for each of the major topic areas, crossing those two. I mean, this is the way I would start your organizing as soon as you get home. Take everything from the institute and plug it into these different expandos. Okay? The next thing is you need to file as soon as possible. Okay? Use the time between rounds of tournaments to improve files. I mean, the reality in our squad is every day of a tournament, our team's going to get a stack of evidence. And so they, you know, and sometimes it's frustrating because I come in and they're just about to debate and I still see this big stack of evidence sitting there. And I'm like, well, that's useless. You know, uh, as much as socializing can be fun at tournaments, um, 
you have to make sure that you are uh, giving enough time to stay organized. I mean, we travel, we spend a lot of money, we travel to debate. You can socialize later on in the day, you can socialize a little bit here and there, but, you know, as social of a person as I am, um, when I go to a debate tournament, I take it fairly seriously. It's not just goof off time during between rounds. It's time that you should spend getting more organized. Okay? Here's a drill you can do um, with your team. You can drill yourself by having your coach say, okay, you're affirmative, you're right, and um, get out your affirmative expandos. Okay, they make, here's their off-case arguments. They run this T, they run this counter plan, they run these two disads, and they run these three case arguments. Go. How long does it take you to pull that out? You should be able to do it in like less than 30 seconds. If it takes you more than 30 seconds, then you need to do it again. You know, we have speaking drills, we have flowing drills, but we don't have organization drills. You need to have organization drills where you are making sure that you can find first lines that fast. And if you can't, and you need to work harder, you've got to get more organized so that it doesn't take you time. Time is so, so important. Um, as I mentioned at the top, there's lots of reasons why being organized is going to help you. Um, Constantly modify all your first lines. Don't think that once you've got organized that you're done. You know, every, your, your first line should constantly be improving. With every tournament, your first line should be getting better, more updated, and maybe even more uh, sophisticated. So it's really important that you aren't just like, okay, I'm organized, now I'm done. The organization process never ends, okay? Be anal about your files. I mean, don't let them get messy. Be, I mean, if you're gonna be a, if you're gonna be a real tidy on anything, it should be about how organized your files are. I mean, I can't explain enough how uh, important organizing is to being successful, but I do know for certain that I would have never been successful if it wasn't for the fact that I was again, very, when it comes to organizing things, I was very, very picky. You know, you have to be picky. You can't be like, oh, that's, uh, it's good enough, it's close enough. Um, and don't loan them to people. If other people want to come look at them, you know, you, you really want to be careful about handing over your expando. Because if you've personalized it, if they disrupt that in any way, there's nothing that you can do. So I would say, I mean, I'm just re recommending, you know, you do what you want, but I wouldn't loan files. I just wouldn't. I, I would keep, if you've got a whole expander that you've been working on and organizing, then you can sort of, if someone else says, can I look at it, yeah, you'd be like, you look at it and I'll be right here, and we'll making sure that you don't take any. I'm serious. I've seen so many problems with this. You know, you, can, you think you can trust people with your files, but there are some people who are just incredibly disorganized. They can't even keep track of, you know, where they put their glasses or their keys or, like, any of the basic stuff, and you're going to give them this complex filing system and they're supposed to somehow return it to you in the same condition? I mean, you, you can decide, I guess, who you want to trust, but, you know, you're, you're, I don't think it's your obligation to hand over your file because somebody else wants to look at it, you know? You've put a lot of work into it. You can work together with them. You can show them what you've done. But I would be very wary, and I've had many problems on my teams where someone hands over a file and then has this illusion that it's going to come back in the same condition. It's always going to come back a little bit different because the other people tend not to, you know, if you're loaning it to someone, then typically you're probably loaning it to someone who's really disorganized. And so they're basically asking you to bail them out. And, you know, you've got to understand the inherent risk of helping someone who's disorganized by giving them your file. I mean, you know, it, it, be, it, it takes a lot of work. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. Organizing is a very time-consuming, and um, it can be very demanding upon you because if you're really organized, you're basically going to have thought about every possibility before a debate and thought of answers to all those arguments and so on. So it's a lot of work. And it really is frustrating when you put that much work in and then somebody else disrupts it. So be careful about that. Um, here's another thing that I see happen all of the time, especially with young people. They're done the tournament, they throw all of their evidence in the box, and they're like, let's go home. It makes me sick. It really does. It's just like, no, 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 no. Because I know what's going to happen is that your next tournament, you're not going to know where anything is because you forgot about where, where everything is. And you should go leave a tournament with your files in just as good of condition, if not better, than when you got there. 
That's just a, a standard you have to follow. You cannot, I don't care how upset you are you lost that round, I don't care how tired you are, sit your butt down and file it. You know, it is, I'm ta the most frustrating thing for me as a coach are seeing students who don't respect their evidence. You know, they, they don't, they just sort of leave it in, like they leave the room after a round and all their evidence is scattered everywhere and they're like, I'll come back and deal with it later. No, before you leave a room, you can walk out and get some water, you know, or you can get a snack or something, but come back, sit down, file your evidence. I mean, you, in, you need to make sure at the end of every debate that you know that everything you took out of your boxes went back into them. And the longer you wait, the greater the chances are that you miss, you forget you place something over here, or somebody else either accidentally or quite honestly, I've been seeing a higher percentage of people stealing evidence. We have found several people, caught them red-handed, where they had our evidence, and it was just like, what's up with that? I mean, you know, we'd all like to think we're all ethical, but, you know, in an activity where uh, evidence can really be a, um, an incredibly important asset to victory, if you are not very cautious with your evidence, don't be surprised if it's mysteriously missing. I mean, I wish it wasn't that way, but I think from my experiences now, I've seen that there, are, there is that element of, um, you know, unethical behavior, and I think you don't want someone else to, you know, mess up your filing system because you were too lazy after a round to clear, clear it up. Um, an important part of this is to acknowledge you're never going to be done, ever. I mean, unless you're on a team that <laughs> sort of stops doing research real early in the year. Um, it, this is a never-ending process, but you can't be, you can't give up. You've got to keep struggling with it. I mean, this whole process of organizing is really a way of learning. Um, learning about the arguments, learning about the possibilities. Um, it's very, it requires a high level of brain power to organize. I mean, here's the reality. You're either organizing before you get to that round, or you're organizing in the round. And I've explained ten reasons why organizing before the round is the only way to be successful. Now, you can wait until you show up at a tournament and then hope that you can sort of wing it. Well, let me tell you right now. Um, don't, don't ask questions about why you didn't win the round. Don't ask questions about why you didn't get speaker awards. If you are not or, as organized as you possibly can be, you, have no, you shouldn't have any questions about why you're not successful. It's, 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 it's really like a, just a, a, a barrier that if you don't figure out how to get over it, you know, disorganization will prevent anyone from being successful. Okay, here's some other things about being uh, organized, not necessarily in terms of your specific files. But you need to have a notebook that you bring with you to every tournament 